Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar here coming at you with another video. This is just an inverter change out. Um, pretty straightforward. This is a 10kW system. Put this in about, I don't know how many years ago. Yeah, at least five or six years ago because the inverters are out of warranty. And uh, this inverter's gone bad, so I'm going to be changing it out. Uh, there's no longer an Aurora PVI 3.6 OUTD dash s dash whatever so we're going to be putting in an sma is the inverter i'm going to be installing in its place it's an sma and it looks to be a good bit wider so see how that's going to go for me there's really no good way to cut this thing off see it's about 250 volts on each leg and there's really no good way for me to, unless I get up there and tarp the solar array or do this in the dark, which my wife ain't gonna like. I'm just gonna gingerly and carefully remove each conductor and tape it off. Luckily, I've got tons of extra wire to land everything. So you just be careful and you do one at a time and it's, you can do this. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is tape your inverter or tape your PV circuits off real good and uh, gently pull each one of them out tape them off sometimes it helps to cut the tape first so that you can just wrap it around or if you have somebody to help you um, and that just gets you safe so you can pull your conductors out so this new style of the Dash 41 SMA inverters you actually take the bottom part off mount it and then you set the inverter on top so I've got a variety of masonry fasteners in here. One of the reasons is because it's brick. Brick can be weird. So if a lead anchor fails, a tapcon will hold. If a tapcon doesn't hold, then I've got a dang sleeve anchor. That's a sleeve anchor right there. You can make a hole and then you put that in there. So there's the sleeve anchor. There's a lead head with a removable point. Those are nice because otherwise these are kind of permanent. Permanent. This is my favorite screwdriver. Now I'm a man with many screwdrivers, but this is my favorite. The extended reach is an awesome screwdriver. It's in the Klein bubble pack. I don't know if it's made in the United States anymore. I don't think it is. I think it's made in Mexico or Taiwan. Yep, made in Taiwan, which hurts. But that extended reach bit is just something I cannot live without. All right, guys, so there it is. Final voltage check before I energize this thing. So I got about 240 volts DC on both sides. And this one kind of blew my mind a little bit. Uh, when I first came out here, just the shape of the other inverter and how tight they had it. You can see I had to really wedge it in there. But a uh, little bit of liquid tight and uh, everything's okay. Down here, you know, the knockouts on the uh, SMA inverter are three quarter and they don't like you to mess with it. So I used one inch and then I tapered down. And this is the type of conduit I have used. This is liquid tight, flexible metal conduit. So this is a nice type of conduit. If you want something a little stronger than just say a standard piece of where is this it? is just liquid tight non-metallic so this would be typically they'll abbreviate conduit names this is lfnc so that's liquid tight flexible non-metallic conduit and this is let's see if i can find it it's liquid tight conduit but it's got a there's an MC somewhere in there, but you can tell, the best way to tell is just to look. Fittings are gonna be different. And this is a metal conduit. This is gonna last longer. And the way that you're allowed to install it, as per NEC code, is, is a little different. But, uh, there we go. Just flexed up in there. And um, we are ready to energize this system. These SMA inverters are not that difficult to install. Especially if you read the manual, but uh, 
the, the hard part about this was just making making the wider inverter fit in such a tight spot. You can see I have just barely enough room to, to do that handle. And um, here's here's just an inside look. You got your DC on one side, so your PV strings go right in. Everything's labeled. That's a push-in terminal, so you actually push in there to open the terminal up, and then you just stick the wire in when you pull your screwdriver out of that hole. It's in. There's the AC side, there's uh, the grounds, and then there's some other stuff that we're not using down here. We're not going to be using the secure power supply. If we did, that would be the output for the secure power supply, and when grid's down, you get power from those terminals. And the switch leg to turn the secure power supply on and off is right here. You can't barely read it, but it says SPS. And then there's my AC side that just looks like a air conditioner disconnect. It's 240 volts, knife blade disconnect for the utility, right next to the meter. The customers are happy. They're happy. Looking at their inverter. Man, there's that array in the pollen. It's 